Okay, so um, nice to see you. I am bummed that it's just the three of you because I had figured. So I actually first want to know why. Like I can understand that there are there are fears, there are anxieties because of which maybe we couldn't get to prototyping. But like, let's discuss that. Let's discuss what the exact um, hurdle was. Is it lack of time? Do we need more time for prototyping? Or is it, um, is it just this fear of perfection that until it's perfect, I can't put it out there? What is it? Tell me what you felt through the week about the task. And then I have a solution, but I actually want to first get to know what. Okay, so my group actually finished the prototyping and Salma sent you the website and the uh, Insta account and I sent you the app. You didn't reply to me whether it opened or not because if it didn't open, I'd have to find another link. Is this on Discord? Yeah. <laughs> How have I missed this? This is so strange. And you sent it on me to me by Tuesday. What yeah. what had we discussed? Wednesday, Wednesday night. Discussed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me just open up Discord right now. I'm so sorry, Nada. I don't know how I've missed this. That's oh, fine. Bless me. Okay. I can see that Selma has sent me something. Ah. Okay. So I can understand that communicate. Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't know why. So it doesn't show up on our chat. Oh, it does show up on our chat. I don't know how I have not seen this. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, and you watch, you made this on TechUni. Life code. Okay, tell me the experience. What what was it um, like? Was So I can understand that one problem was communication because you three are in three different places. Was there any other challenges that you faced? No. Uh, yes. Well, downloading the app was really, really hard. And I don't know if it works because I tried it on my Android phone. It didn't work. I tried it on my dad's Apple phone. It worked. So I don't know if it's going to work for everyone. And downloading it was generally very hard because you have to communicate with a specific server to download it. But I think that was the only challenge I faced. Also, time because like this is the deadline I'm not going past it and I had avoided this task for like the whole two days that I and I was doing it last minute but I managed to finish it and like I and like Salma kept reminding me she was like you don't have to aim for perfection it doesn't have to be perfect it's just a prototype you know she was really supportive okay yeah yeah I'm hearing you fine I know that Valentina Arnav and uh Yara to, came up with a model and Anav sent me that also. Um, were there any challenges that you guys faced, Valentina and Anav? Well, on my end, I didn't face any um, problems or challenges, honestly. I did take a lot of time to um, think about what's going to be on my website and everything. So I didn't face any challenges to do so. I just... Um, Went, went on for it and just completely did it. I had no challenges in this. Perfect. Valentina? Well, um, so I think the, the thing is, I understood everything and Arnav was like so helpful with, like he, he was collaborating with us and like basically he did pretty much most of the work because we didn't even know what we were doing. Um, but the thing is, I don't even know how to name my own website and everything and i'm just like so confused because i don't know what to do about anything i don't know what i want to do with it mm, yeah i i i hear you um what do you mean by confused and don't know what to do with it like hmm, like can you elaborate on that i just want to understand more properly well so basically like we know how to make a website now and we know like what we want to put in it but i don't know how to like write and kind of structure everything so that it's you know okay. um easy for anyone to just access it and be like you know get information uh, without having to look for it you know mm -hmm. like content wise yeah i hear you okay cool 
Hi, Naima. Uh, what we are discussing is just uh, challenges that we might have had while doing the uh, prototyping. Um, so was there anything that you felt specially blocked on? Like you just didn't know how to move ahead from that point on? Is Was there anything like that that you faced? Um, I actually don't think so. It was very nice to work with Nada and Salma. And I like the way we also uh, picked three of the different prototypes. So we have like an app, a website, and um, like an advertising, like an Instagram page. So I think it was nice that all of us worked separately on it at the same time as working as a team. All right, great. So happy to hear that. So basically, the four of you here have done the prototype. I'm so sorry, Nada and Naima, that I've not gone through yours. I don't know how I missed that, but I have gone through the one that Valentina, Anna, and Yara did. So the, the challenge that I had or the contest that I've designed for this day is now that you've worked as a group on one kind of prototype, today in this two hours, we'll work together and each of you will build a prototype within these two hours for your own businesses, okay? And it's a very rough prototype. It's like a draft prototype, but it's to show, it's so that anytime that you feel blocked, I'm here and you can just tell me, hey, Nikita, can't figure this out. How do I do it? And then we solve that together. And I feel like this exercise will also help just build in a lot of more confidence about your own, um, like products and services and everything that you're thinking. So oh, we're gonna start. I Go think on. we needed a heads up. I have no clue how this is gonna look like. I didn't plan that yet. You don't. You don't have to do anything. I, we will like at so whatever I throw at you. If you feel like, oh my God, what is this? Just stop me and say, Nikita, no clue what what you're talking about. So let's do this from the beginning. All right, remember how we talked about, do you have a pen and paper? Let's start with that. Does everybody have a pen and paper? Yep. Great, okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is remember how last time we spoke about a, a river of life journey. Like now in retrospect, I feel like, although it worked, because all of you turned out with your own um, prototypes, I feel like there was too much information that was given in the last context. Like we just bombarded you with so many things you can do. So we're going to focus that out today. Um, if you have a pen and paper, what I want you to basically do is divide the pen and paper four blocks. Like, a, like you remember how we did our SWOT analysis? Just like that. Like make four different columns. I'm going to show you. Okay, I didn't, I can't see myself, so I don't know how this will show. But basically just do this, okay? Just make like a cross like that. And in these, what I want you to map out is morning, afternoon, evening, night. So what does your morning look like? What does your afternoon look like? What does your evening look like? And what does your night look like? In these four things, I'm going to give you around five minutes now, um, draw it. Don't just write it. Don't just write, I, I brush and I take a bath and I go to school. Draw it. Um, if you can't draw the whole scene, just draw icons, like a book for school or, I don't know, a, a shower head for a shower. But draw what your morning, your afternoon, your evening and your night looks like. Cool. Wait, I think this generally is the first, whether we're in school or whether we're on vacation or whether. What does it look like right now? Right now. Yeah. Okay. I wake up super late. That's okay. Is, the, is it that so late that your morning and afternoon are the same? Uh, <laughs> I don't. don't answer that, Nala. Don't. No, I won't. <laughs> Okay, fine. Let's just take a school day. Let's take a school day because, but I also know like for Valentina, school is almost over. So I also want you to think about otherwise. It's uh, over actually. 
I, I finished yeah. like this Thursday. Yeah. Wow. So like everybody's school's over and mine is still going on. Seriously. <laughs> I, I like seriously. This is this is just getting worse day by day. Are like I still have forty fine. days. You're not allowed to complain about anything since you live in New York City. I am not allowing you that to complain. That doesn't matter because like, I've been going yeah, to school exactly. for a long time. And then, you know, even after that, I'm just going, you know, to a university after this for like an internship. I'm not on break for, for the whole summer. I'm not you're on break. You're complaining I'm... or bragging because you're no, no, serious. Like... This is not fair. They should Nikita, keep long summer breaks. This here. is not good. Arnav is all. Uh, Arnav is like, it's not good, but he's like, oh yeah, I'm just like walking like casually on New York Square, whatever it's called, and you know, just oh my God, I'm complaining because of all the ambulances, sounds and stuff, and he's just like, oh yeah, you know, just casually complaining about living in New York City, like no. Yeah, his complaint was, oh my God, after this, I'm going to have to go to university in New York and do an internship. Life does not give me a break. <laughs> no, seriously, there's no summer break for me. It's literally, I have to actually even go there. It's not, like, fair. Seriously. I have no oh. break. Like, to you be guys fair, are always having yeah. summer break. It's not to fair. To be fair, yes, I hear you. Like, it's it's not always as pretty as we think it is. So, yes, I hear you. I, I, I can't sympathize or empathize because I've not felt it, but I'm sure it is tough. Not having a break can be tough. So, Take your five minutes, your time starts now, and draw, okay? I want drawings. Don't say I can't draw. Everybody can draw. So just draw your morning, your afternoon, your evening, and your... I generally can't draw. My shower head looks like a raccoon, but okay. It's okay. I'm going to draw... Can we draw, like, me. objects? Yeah, that's what I said. Like, if you can't draw a whole scene, like, I don't want a painting. Uh, but just draw, like, things that make you look like, uh, that, that we can understand what the day looks like. You can draw a clock to show what time you eat. You can draw a car to show that you're commuting. There's so many things. Just, like, look at it like a cartoon strip and just keep drawing. No, you see, the thing is, for me, I don't, I, I'm, a, I'm a really, I really hate routines and everything. So every single day, I try my best. I try my best to make my day look different, at least by 1% from yesterday and the day before it. Because if my biggest nightmare is you. all day is the same. I, I hear you, Yara. I think that's my biggest nightmare too. Um, but there are these, these rituals that I have. Like, I know that each day for me is different, but I know that the one hour that I'm going to take a bath, there are going to be candles around me, and then there's going to be soothing music that's going on. Like, for me, my, my bath time is a ritual. Like, it's, it's just me and nice warm water. So things like that. Just draw, um, draw your rituals. Basically, I just want to know what your day looks like. All right, I'm done with mine. All right, cool. I can never understand if Valentina and Yara are doing this out of love or what, but okay. Um, if your drawings are done, the next thing I want, if they're not done, chill. There's no hurry. You still have like two minutes. But in case your drawings are done, what I now want you to think about is write down four, actually five, five services that you use every day. And when I say services, I mean apps. Like it could be apps or it could be places or like they're, they're definitely part of your routine. So, for example, Netflix, Spotify, Instagram, uh, McDonald's, any five services that you use every day and give them a symbol. So, for example, you could say Spotify is a triangle or Netflix is a big N 
or Insta is a big I or McDonald's is MC. So you could actually give them symbols like triangle, square, circle, or you could just use the letter to like as long as you understand what this means. So I'm asking you to build like a like you know how maps have a trail. So I'm asking you to build a trail. Cool. Ooh, so think of five terms. Go on. Does it have to be on. online services? Can it be real life services? Yeah, McDonald's is also like a real life service, no? Yeah. Yeah, so it could be a real life service. But five services that are part of your day. And now I want you to think about in these four squares, where do these services find place? Like what time of the day are you using it maximum? I'm sure Insta is something that you're using throughout, but still what time of the day is it that you intentionally use it the most? When and where are you encountering these services? Nikita, you know, in, yeah. our last, in our last meeting, before you left, I wanted to tell you something, but then you left. I, I, I know this is very random and very weird, but what products are you using for your skin? It's flawless. It's <laughs> not true. But I used, so I think two years back, I went into this whole um, only natural product thing so i don't use shampoo or anything i make everything at home so right now what am i using for my skin that's a good question ah i actually used this use a scrub which i made from almond and walnut by crushing them so every i think that's that's probably the secret that i only use natural products it's for two reasons it's one that i that i do love nature and the second is i just hate plastic and I've been trying to reduce my plastic intake so I don't buy stuff from outside and I try to do it at home. Hope that answers your question. It does. All right. Yeah, go on, go on. You know, and I do they sell Nabulsi soaps in India? No, they don't. What are these? Uh, Nab, uh, Nab, it's from Nablus. Nablus is a, is a small city in Palestine where they make really natural soaps out of olive oil, out of very natural olive oil, and it's the best thing to use for your skin. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah that's a, it's like a, it's like uh, one of uh, like the best sellers over here in the U.S. It's but like we also amazing. have another soap, and it's called like the Ritual of um, Sakura. It's from Japan. It was made like um, Japanese people and like that's the best seller over here for like so. But yeah, I've heard of that. It's pretty famous here. Mm, nice. Okay. Have you guys um, made these five services and plotted it on your, on your uh, day's yes. journey? If you have, put it up on Discord. I want everyone. So where you put it on discord is your zone so that it's visible to everybody so like now that take a picture of it and put on another zone and now put it on another zone All right, I can see Naima's already. Oh, Naima, that's so cute. How do I know what stands for what? Okay, the first one is Snapchat. The next one is Netflix. The third one is Insta. What's the fourth one? TikTok. Yes, it's TikTok. 
All right, cool. And I can see Valentina's. Valentina, where is your day? <laughs> These are just your five services, which I think is Netflix and I'm guessing WhatsApp, Insta, no, or the cat, and Spotify. The cat one is a game, actually, but I, I just wanted to say that I usually play games on my phone, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. and what, is, what does your day look like? So when do you play these the most? Like if you go up to uh, Naima's, you'll see she's plotted it on the day timeline. And I just want to also understand. The reason we're doing this, guys, is because it will really help you build your character journeys. And that's the next thing we're doing. Um, I can't, for some reason, I can't see Nada's because it's a .heic file. But okay. Let's try to open .heic. I tried to record it. All right, cool. This looks good, guys. See, it's not that tough. You're already one way closer to your... Um, okay, Arnav and, uh, and Yara, you'll have to put it up. Huh? You can't, like, get away. So take no, a no, picture. No, it's not, it's it like not, um, it's not going. It's saying it's, it's like, it's saying it's invalid or something. It's not letting me put it. All right, okay. Now, Let me try the next thing, that's all right. Keep trying. The next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to put you in the same groups that you were in. So, so um, Yara, Arnav, and Valentina go in one group, and we don't have Selma. So right now, um, Nada and Naima, you go in one group. What I want you, if you see chat right now, I've put up a way of looking at a customer. In today's session, what we're really going to think about is when you build that product, why should why should anybody click on it, right? And so like you guys just through this exercise, what you did was you traced your journey as a customer for Instagram or WhatsApp or whatever service that you've put down. And we will use this to figure out how we can create our product so that our customers also get sort of pull to it. So for the next 15 minutes, I'm going to put you down 15 to 20, okay? I, I'm just going to give 20 because I know Arnav will ask for extra time. So for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to put you in your um, breakout rooms. And what I want you to think about, McDonald's is something that all of you are aware of. So think about the McDonald's customer journey. I've already put down some questions that may help you in the chat. Um, you can add more questions for yourself. But what I basically want you to do is think about even before you've entered McDonald's, from the first craving that you have for McDonald's, what is it that is pulling you to this one particular joint, right? Are these memories, are they making, like for example, McDonald's has a special way, you know, they have that whole children ball space thing in every um, McD store. Is it that? Is that why you go? And as kids, if you get used to it, then is that the memory for which you go there as an adult as well? Is there an emotion attached to it? They make a big deal out of birthdays. Is that what? So McDonald's is a very interesting strategy. What McDonald's does is they really pay attention to how to bring in kids to their joint. Because, and that's why their birthday celebrations are special. They have kids meal. They have. Oh, I their remember own. this. There was like um, this movie on it too. It, it was like um, the founder or something. And in that they showed like what McDonald's strategy was. That like during that time, it was that, you know, people would uh, take their cars. They would come to restaurants. They wouldn't go in, but they would order the food. And then it would take like one hour, two hours for the food to come. But McDonald's was you walk in and like in 30 seconds or one minute, you get the food. It was simple. Exactly. So McDonald's is a company that's also redone itself over and over. And they've always redone themselves by understanding what does the customer want at this point. So the point that 
and I was talking about is true. That was the time when people were so fed up. Food delivery systems were not in place, and I'm not. Uh, I'm sorry. McDonald said, "You know what? We'll create a drive-through that you can just come, place your order within five minutes, have it, and move out." Because that's also the time when America is looking at a fast-paced life. Both, if, like both partners in a marriage are working, nobody has the time to cook meals. and that was the biggest market for mcdonald's mcdonald's was like let's take a in right there let's give them food fast so that they keep coming back to us and that's why they made their breakfast specials that you're running late for office you don't have the time to cook breakfast come to our drive through just come and say that you want your muffins and we'll get it to you in 5 minutes then they realized and it's interesting because even country wise mcdonald's strategy keeps changing so i remember when i was back in um in my childhood in saudi mcdonald's strat- marketing strategy was so dedicated first at the fact that they were halal 100% halal and the second that they really put in their energies into bringing the kids in so they build like a whole big play area and and the mascot was somebody that was attracting kids because yeah, as a child yeah I, yes yes now that that's like a memory i have like you know there there used to be like this um playground inside the restaurant and that's what like attracted so many kids they were like okay exactly. this is like the first restaurant like which has a playground why not exactly and as a kid if you start getting addicted to mcdonald's it's something it's an addiction that's not easy to give up and therefore those are their loyal customers those kids who started playing in mcdonald's as children and celebrating birthdays in mcdonald's they are the loyal customers who kept coming back and bringing their own kids back when they got married which is why mcdonald's is, has survived for so long because they've really redone themselves over and over um with the same example it's also interesting to look at film stars and see how they have remade themselves according to what their audiences have asked of them so when you look at let's say somebody like george clooney um you will see that the kind of movies george clooney does keeps changing according to one his own growth okay like as a person you grow and you want to do different things but also according to what is it that the audience is asking of him what is it that the audience really enjoys him and they redo themselves so from chocolate boy to action hero to this uh, person who's always like building strategies and like a con man these are all phases that most even leonardo da uh, dicaprio for that matter not da vinci dicaprio for that matter so whether you're selling yourself or you're selling a product it is important to reinvent yourself based on what your audience wants so i'm going to break you out into rooms and what we are going to do you have what i would say is just copy that one long message that i have sent um on the in the chat room and that's what you're going to discuss for the next 15 minutes so you're going to build and if you want it helps if you draw it out if or you can just tell me in text also like you can tell me and describe it to me but if you can then draw out what is the customer journey that a person goes through when they walk into mcdonalds why is it that they keep going back to mcdonalds cool and remember that we are going to connect this to your product then we are going to talk about your individual products and create a customer journey for that all right your rooms are open business right um once once your business is on there are few things that i want you to think about so basically like we did with the four squares for morning afternoon evening and night i want you to make six different blocks and you could use six different pages for this like you don't have to restrict yourself basically six different pages to build six steps of a customer journey you can start this by thinking of the prompts that i've put in 
So for example, what is it that you want your customers first thought to be when they think about your product? Ask yourself, think about your favorite app. Let's say your favorite app is Instagram. Why is it that you open Instagram every day? What is that thought? It could be something as simple as it's the most in thing on like everybody who is a somebody is on Instagram today um, or Clubhouse for that matter. That could be your motivation. Your motivation would be that I want to be an influencer one day and therefore it's important for me to have social presence. Your other thing can be, I just like, so when Instagram started, it started with a very different idea from what Insta is today, right? Insta was very exclusive. It was this platform for photographers who were only sharing good photographs with each other. And today Insta has taken over the world in a very different way. It's a place where you can literally document every part of your life. That's what Snapchat does also. Snapchat's extra feature, like when you think about the story feature on Insta or Facebook, that's exactly what Snapchat does. Snapchat is a whole different product that uses that one feature and yet survives as a different entity. So think about what is your motivation to opening your favorite app and therefore what should be your customer's motivation for opening your app. Like I never realized until recently I was so a month back I was in a place which which really like had had no internet it was it was very remote okay and um, it's then that I realized one of my favorite apps is this app that does food delivery it's called Zomato in India um, but it's basically a food delivery app and I realized I didn't it was such a strange feeling to not function without it because in this location where I was that app just didn't work. Like even Uber didn't work over there. But the idea is that it took, so I realized my motivation was that no matter where I was, I could get the food that made me feel comfortable. And that's why it was one of my favorite apps. So think about what it is that you want your customer to want so that they open that app. Cool? That's the emotional craving. Uh, sorry, that's the physical craving. Then we come to the emotional craving. What's the emotional attachment that this app can have, right? Um, what do what problem for them does it solve? What what do they get excited about? And then the third is a deciding factor, which is if you want it to become a necessity, then how do you create that necessity in someone's life, right? Um, is it that it's an app that lets best friends like communicate no matter where they are. So even if they have already bad network, but there's one person on your entire list who's your best friend and you can communicate with them anyhow, like under any circumstance, right? What is it that this app does for you? So six different pages and six different steps of customer journey. That's what I want you to do for the next it's 8.25 by my watch. For the next five minutes, that's what you do. Um, so, okay, on the total, I will give you 20 minutes for this exercise, but I'll, let me explain the whole exercise. Once you're done making sex, uh, wow, forget I said that. Once you're done making these six stages of customer journey, and don't just write it, sketch it out. Like, if it's like, you know how you did for the first exercise, if there are things, if it's a clock um, that every day at 12. So there's this one app on my phone, which is which tracks the amount of water I drink. And every day around noon, it starts giving me an alarm that, my God, your day's content, like water content has not been reached. Drink water, drink water, drink water. So if you want something like that for your app, that there's a reminder that goes off, that people have to immediately act upon, put it down as like a sketch. So you can write, you can doodle, you can sketch. I would encourage you guys to sketch it out. But if you feel like writing works, then okay. Use some level of sketch. Once you have these six stages done, um, you can actually also use things like Canva. Like if you want to make a poster out of these six stages, like an infographics, cool. Easiest is just hand drawing. Once you have them done, 
I want you to go to one. If you're using an Android, it's the first link for you. If you're using an Apple phone, it's the second link for you. And download this app, which is basically called a Marvel app. And on Marvel app, you don't have to do anything. You just have to create a new project and then upload these six things, these six pages that you have. And so what that does is that it will give you your first prototype. It will give you your first customer journey. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Perfect. So now I am going to put you in breakout rooms because I feel like a lot of times when you're stuck, just talking to a friend helps, but you're essentially working alone for the next 20 minutes. You're working alone to make these six different panels and you can sketch it out or you can write it or you can use Canva or fancy tools. You can even use photographs for all I care, okay? Um, and then you're going to download Marvel app and upload them into a new project. So what would help is if you just like copy the last three messages I've sent on chat. Or you know what? Don't worry about that. I'll do that. I'll copy the last three messages I've sent on chat and I'll put it in your breakout rooms. But you're essentially just working alone, but you have your friends to talk to. Got it? So um, I have a question. Yes, go. So um, we have to basically write like our customer journey like how our customer will feel, how our customer should feel, and like just answer these questions. And um, I have like a good news for you. So um, you said like where like you went, you didn't get any internet. So now Tesla is doing like this, no, not Tesla, SpaceX. SpaceX mm -hmm. is doing a project and they're putting like some 1000 satellites in space and it's creating like a shield and that can give internet connection anywhere for free, anywhere in the world. Oh, wow. That is so amazing. If this happens, that solves such a big problem, man. Like, and I'm thinking more about the marginalized, marginalized sectors when I think this, but it definitely yeah. does much. Okay, cool, guys. I'm going to put the three questions in your, like, I'll come to your rooms and put them, but go have fun. Okay, I'm just waiting for the others to come in. Great. Okay, so you have your first prototypes ready. Um, like, congratulations, firstly, because this is the big step. If you've taken this step, you're good. Um, I also want, because you guys are more, really close to the expo, like we, from now on, it's just going to be really hands-on actually building it, actually testing it. So um, that's why every time we do something, I ask you to put it up on your zone because on the final expo, it'll become really easy to build your, your or just to take people through what you've done. Um, have, I would also encourage for this week, I know I told some of you already, but now I'm telling this to all of you, start building your logos. That's something that you want ready. Um, logo as well as your mission and vision statement like what is the thing that you're here to solve how do you plan to solve it that's all what mission and vision is like your vision is that okay in um, in another 20 years I want everybody to be able to take for example if I take Nada's and I say in another 10 years I want everybody to look at beauty differently and also be able to take photographs that build confidence for people. That's her vision. And how does he? How does she plan to do it? That's the mission. That um, how I plan to do it is by building this app and doing this thing, right? Um, so logo, mission, vision. These are the three tasks for this week. I and. What you do now is that if you have these six steps ready and if you've uploaded everything on the app, just take screenshots of each of the steps of the app and put it up on Discord. So that when you finally are building your actual business plan, 
you have everything you need on one channel. Like you just have to go to your zone and you have your problem questions there. You have your interview questions. You have your survey. You have your logo, your prototype, your mission, vision. Everything is in one place and you just have to like beautify it to build the final uh, final presentation. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up the room for, for doubts, questions, observations. What do you feel like after you actually build this prototype? Do you see, does the final product become more real to you now? Is actually what I want to know. Wow, that was the first time that I opened up to questions and had none. That feels very good. Okay, guys. So I'm going to. Uh, we're reaching the last part of this conversation, and actually, this is one of this is one of my favorite parts of this contest, um, which is making an ad. Okay. Um, I'm going to now mix the groups because I feel like you work too much in these comfort zones. But before we go. I want to talk about what are your favorite ads. Let's go around the room and talk about what is the favorite advertisement that you've seen on like wherever. You could have seen it on YouTube. You could have seen it on TV. It could have been an ad in a newspaper. It could be anything. But what's your favorite ad? And also, why do you like it? Like, why is it something that stayed with you? OK, I'm going to start. Um, it's not my favorite ad, but there is this one ad that I absolutely like. I I think it's really silly, but it's also because it's so silly that it's stuck in my head. Um, there are these chips in India called uh, Bingo Mad Angles, and <laughs> and the first ad that came for Bingo Bingo Mad Angles was you know how in the 70s you would have these commercials of um, I was very upset. I had lost everything in life. And then this magical product oh, came into I my Oh, I know that. I saw that ad. I saw that ad. <laughs> I mean, like, that guy sat at first and then, you know, he gets one of those chips and he's, like, super hyped up. It is, it is so funny. It is such a funny ad. Because it's actually, it's actually a mocking of ads that used to be made in the 70s. So this person, this girl would come and say, I am so sad. My cat ran away and all everybody hates me. I don't know what to do. Then suddenly there would be this bingo, mad angles. And then she would eat the chip. <laughs> and her life would remain the same. There was no difference in her life. Her cat was still, still hated her. But she was just happy because she had the chips. And, and the had it's like, okay, you know what? I think I think let's do this. Let's all search for our favorite ads. So let's take like, uh, if you know your favorite ad, just say it right now. But if you want to share screen and show us your favorite ad, I think that will be more fun. So let's take four minutes because it's 9-11 by my clock. Use YouTube and find your favorite ad. And then we'll take a round, share screens and see each other's favorite ads. Cool? All right, go search for your favorite ads on YouTube. I like seriously don't know which one to take. I know exactly mine. Could we just take like one of the symbol ads like Nike's or Coca-Cola? All right. I love Coke ads because a lot of Coke and Pepsi ads are always playing against each other. Like they're actually trying I to. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I love it. For us in the Middle East, like the ads for the washing machine products are always against each other. And it, and it clearly looks like they had beef with each other. It's, it's so clear that they had drama. You should just see them. They're funny.
I genuinely think people in Ramadan wait for the ads, not for the actual shows. Can I go now? So, yeah, if you if you found yours, go ahead, share screen. My top favorite ads, and everyone probably gets annoyed by them, is Grammarly. Writing is not that easy, but Grammarly could help. This sentence is grammatically like all these. I love the way they're explaining about what what they're doing and all the different types. And I just it's catchy, and I honestly fell for it. And it it it's the only thing that was never a scam to me i've never complained about grammarly there they are reasonable for for the premium they have and the free stuff they have so i love that nice okay nara have you found yours or anybody if you found yours just share a screen show us the ad and let's talk about why it's so funny or why it's working I mean, uh, this is a really cringy ad, but it's stuck in my mind. It is when in Egypt, Shipsy and Bipsy, uh, it's Pepsi, but uh, you know, the accent. Shipsy is Lay's, but they translated it and they did a collab and the ad was like a rap song. And another commercial I've watched recently and it's on my mind is Disney's Cruella. I think it's a really good movie and the ad really caught my attention. I watched the ad after the movie, but I'm not a fan of trailers because I feel like they spoil stuff. Another ad, these are like three ads I mentioned, uh, was it was like getting you to donate uh, old clothes and stuff because a lot of people hesitate when it comes to donating money. So like the shirt was talking, I was like, I'm tired of being, uh, you know, sitting in the closet. It would be better if you gave it to someone else. So I think it was a really fun way of raising charity to, you know, people. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, Naima, what's your favorite ad? Um, mine is a Nike ad, actually. And I'm not sure if anyone knows this person, but he's an athlete and his name is Colin Kaepernick. Um, I don't know if I can share my screen. I don't really know how to do it. Um, Try, try. There's that green tiny button saying share screen. See if that works. It should. I mean, you have permissions. Yup, it works. Is it sure? No, not yet. You have to like pick a screen out of it. Like you just tap on share screen and then you pick the screen um, like what you want to share. And then that specific screen is shown to us. If you want, you can send it to me and I'll share my screen for you. Yeah, okay. Send it on WhatsApp, not this card. Until then, can I go? All right. So um, I well I like the um, Geico ads and basically this is um, Geico is like this American car insurance company and it's basically like a lizard who comes up and then whenever a car crashes he's like Geico and then he says something and something about the car insurance and that's really really funny to be honest like you know there's a lizard that just jumps up while car crashes and he says Geico and then um. I also have another one, um, and that is uh, Vlad the Impaler's ad. <laughs> um, this is basically Dracula's ad. I literally saw it yesterday, and that made me watch Dracula's movie. And that made me think that Vlad the Impaler and I are descendants, basically. So yeah, 
Um, that's another ad that I really love. But I also really like the Coke ads. Um, they really mean something at one end. Like they keep making ads and everything, but they always stick to this theme of entertaining the customers. No matter like, you know, they just want to make some good ads to attract more and more people. Yeah, I can't agree more. Okay, I'm going to try to show you actually Yara's favorite ad and one of my favorite ads put together. So Grammarly has really cracked it because Grammarly has, okay, I don't know, but if you can hear, if you can't hear the sound, tell me. Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message and the word choice is bland. Grammarly's cutting edge technology helps you craft compelling, understandable writing that makes an impact on your reader much better. Are you ready to give it a try? Installation is simple and free. Visit Grammarly.com today. Could you hear that? Yup. Yes. All right, great. Why did Grammarly work? Like, I think, like Yara said, it's to the point, it's simple. It's like 20 seconds of your time and it tells you exactly what the app does and why you should download it. Cool. This is more of an emo ad, like it's very emotional, but it's one of the, like, it's one of the really early Apple ads. And I feel like I want to hear from you guys after you see it, why it works. <laughs> Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Okay, that's basically Apple's really early, early, early ad. But did it work? That's my first question. Do you feel pushed by Apple? Yeah, like, I mean, that's like a completely different message. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just amazing, to be honest. Like, you would think that people like, like, you know, the people who work at Apple, they would be like, oh, here's our Apple phone. How about you use it? All right, bye. This is what, you know, like, like, that's what the message really entails. But in this case, it's always like, it's different. It's exactly what they told us. Think different. That's what they did. They also thought different. And that's why, like, Apple is really, really amazing today. Yeah. So the main th the main challenge that Apple was facing in the market when they initially um, launched is that they were very different from the other, you know, other technology that existed. And that's why this ad doesn't talk about technology at all. It doesn't talk about what Apple does, but it still works. So when you're making your ad, think of this practicality, which is what Grammarly does. Grammarly is like, hi, this is what I do. This is the problem I solve. This is how I can help you. So download me right now. To the point, practical, logical, tick mark works. And the other way is emotionally pulling someone in like talking about a broader picture. So the Apple ad works, but it doesn't really speak about Apple at all. It doesn't speak about technology. And yet you feel inspired to go in and at least look at that product. That who is the person who's built, like what is the product that this ad is talking about? I want to see it. Because it's not directly talking about the product, but the philosophy behind the product. That yes, we know we are different, but is it, that what pull uh, pushes the um, human race forward different people doing things differently going against the tide and that's why like you immediately feel like i want to at least check out these people i don't know if i'm going to buy them but i want to check them out right so 
Um, okay, who wants to share the thing next? Um, uh, Yara, can you figure Naima's thing out? Like, can we share screen and see hers? Yep. Great. Okay. Safari. Okay. I really don't know how. Wait. Because when I open the share screen options, I find I find the desktop one and then some options and with the with like the yellow exclamation mark. Okay. And never mind. Naima, just put yours in the chat here. I'll share it for you. Okay. And who else? Valentina, have you figured what your favorite one is? Um, are we still talking like about my favorite ad? Because I have one that I really, really enjoy, like I really like. And it's not a video. I sent it on, on Discord, I think, uh, in the general mm -hmm. chat. But I can share my screen if you want to see it. Yeah, 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 sure. Until I buffer uh, Naima's one, please share screen. Okay, so I can share my screen. Um, okay, so it's here. And basically, it's... Um, okay, <laughs> I don't even know why I liked it so much. I just did. Um, where's the general chat? Okay, are you seeing it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so basically there's like somebody, okay, um, I think this Sabina, however you pronounce that, um, <laughs> made this ad. So it's basically an elevator and it has a, a picture of two people getting married. And then when the elevator opens, like when the door opens, they split up. And inside it, you can see like the ad itself, and it says "divorce oh, lawyer." Oh, that's too funny! <laughs> oh, that's that's too funny. funny. This one is so original. Just I like it just because it is original. Like nobody had done that before. Oh my god, that is so brilliant and so cheeky! <laughs> I mean, the elevator opens. We know that they're divorced, and then you know, hey, here's your lawyer. How about you call me quickly? I'm your lawyer. Oh yeah, exactly. My. This is brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was so brilliant. Oh my god, mm -hmm. exactly right. Like so out of the box. Like who would? Yes, and that... exactly. It's, I think it was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that, Valentina. I'm going to show one that Naima has shared with us, and then we can get into the task of the week. If people say your dreams are crazy, if they laugh at what you think you can do, good. Stay that way. Because what non believers fail to understand is that calling a dream crazy is not an insult, it's a compliment. Don't try to be the fastest runner in your school or the fastest in the world. Be the fastest ever. Don't picture yourself wearing OBJ's jersey. Picture OBJ wearing yours. Don't settle for homecoming queen or linebacker. Do both. Lose 120 pounds and become an Iron Man after beating a brain tumor. Don't believe you have to be like anybody to be somebody. If you're born a refugee, don't let it stop you from playing soccer for the national team at age 16. Don't become the best basketball player on the planet. Be bigger than basketball. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. When they talk about the greatest team in the history of the sport, make sure it's your team. If you have only one hand, don't just watch football, play it at the highest level. And if you're a girl from Compton, don't just become a tennis player. Become the greatest athlete ever. Yeah, 
that's more like it. So don't ask if your dreams are crazy. Ask if they're crazy enough. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for that one. That sent um, shivers down my body. <laughs> yeah, I had goosebumps. Like, it was just like, wow. Naima, and thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. That was inspirational. Was, yeah, was not, only, inspirational. not only was inspirational, but if you notice, a lot of the different athletes that were shown, they were also wearing Nike, like, sportswear. So that's another yeah. good way that they advertise their brand. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously, even the person who was, like, talking, Colin Kaepernick, he also went through a lot in his life to become a um, quarterback in football. He also went through a lot in his life to do so. And I love how they bring it together. Like, in the end, they're like, um, it's only crazy until you do it. So just do it. And that just do it is their tagline. And the way they've just tied it all together. God, that was beautiful. I have some goosebumps still, I think. Wait, okay. So you guys have now seen what works. Um, and even when things don't work, like that highly irritating ad that I was talking about, how it still works in the sense that it's stuck in your head and you can't get it out, right? So even if you get really irritated by some ad, just because they're, I don't know, cheeky and not funny, but funny. Um, if you walk into a store and you see that product, some part of your brain is going to be like, let me try it just because it's stuck in my head. Um, like, you know, in the early 80s, they used to use jingles a lot because marketing was mainly done through radio. And some of these jingles would not even be like, innovative but just irritating so that they stick with your head i don't know if you guys have heard of paytm uh, it's it's a money transfer thing in india and they have this really irritating tagline of paytm karo and there was one time they used it for all like you walked into a train station and you would hear it you walk into a metro station you would hear it so it just like it went on in your head on a loop saying, Paytm, Guru, Paytm, Guru. So you finally just downloaded Paytm and said, dude, I'm doing it. Just stop going into my head. So that is also marketing, but I would tell you guys not to go that way. That's like irritating marketing. But think of more innovative ways, like what Valentina shared, what, uh, what Naima shared. They're so beautiful and how they really tie in the product and that is your next task that by the end by the next Saturday try to at least if not shoot you can't shoot okay but just think of what is the ad that you'd like to make what strategy would you like to build and how you would like to go about it so that's your work cut out for the week which is logo mission vision and the ad how what are the marketing strategies that we're going to pick up? Cool. Does that work, guys? Can I can no. I show you guys something? Like I know that now it's already like over the time, but I want to show you a twenty-seven second video. It's also yeah. a Nike ad, and and like Nike took it down. And uh, I want to see like what do you guys think? Is it like messed up? Is is it is it not okay, or is it actually like motivative? Because I really want to know what you guys think about this. Is that okay? Let me just cut paste the link. How do how do you yeah. do that? Just put it on chat and I'll play it for you. Yep. Copy link. Okay. Sorry, I'm just I just don't know how to use a MacBook. I just recently got it. There. Got it. Okay. Um sharing screen. Give me one second. Hmm. Also, guys, we have our mentor calls while this is buffering. We have our mentor calls. We, we, stop, stop. Where are you running off? Sorry, sorry. Um, it just started off without warning. Okay, I'm going to share screen.
Wow, dark March. All right, guys, what do you think? Should they have taken it down? Do I think? I've seen this on TikTok. I generally don't think it's that bad, as long as you watch the ad till the end, though. It was okay. It wasn't that bad, not that good. It was okay, but it did give the message, which is good. The I just mean, I like message. Yeah, I think it's a smart ad, but I just fear for the people that do not watch the full ads, and maybe like maybe if they're looking at their phone or something and they look up for a quick second, but they don't watch the end of it. So that's yeah. the only thing. I don't think, like, even if they didn't watch the full ad, I don't think anyone is dumb enough to be like, oh, yeah, Nike told me to just do it and, like, commit suicide. Yes, that's going to support their company. I don't think anyone is dumb enough to do that, you know? I think I think they took it down because it makes a parallel between, you know, that, that comes for that one second that just because this person is overweight, they're contemplating suicide. And then the next screen tells you, start exercising. And I feel like it's equating overweight or obesity with a cause for ending life i mean i've been i've been overweight all my life i've never thought of ending my life though and that's why when i saw that and i was like hey that's a bit extreme and i think it's because of that thought that they might have taken it down that how can you why would you even even make somebody think on those lines that if you're overweight you should just die like why even suggest it? I think that's that's probably why they've taken it down. Because yeah. otherwise, I yeah, like I like the. I mean, I don't know. It's just that screen. I was just it's like, really, it's really motivative. Like like that that like getting up on a chair. It could be anything. Like why would it, like it could be anything. It could be fixing something in the ceiling. It could be it could be working out. You know, like it's not nece- doesn't have to necessarily be like ending your life you know but so that's that's where creativity comes in throughout when they start the ad they only show this like from here downwards right they're never showing the head of the person and that's a creative decision it's because that one frame where they get up on the chair is meant to make you and the way their legs just fall it's meant to make you think of suicide there's nothing else you can think of like if you show this ad to 100 people I think 99 of them will say that, yeah, that frame means ending life. Nobody will be like, okay, maybe they are changed. And it's also the legs. Like the moment they get on the chair and drop the chair, the legs just fall, right? And that frame is a very thought out frame. It's not like, okay, let's just put it there. It's meant to make you think of committing suicide. And that is what is wrong with this ad. That, I mean, maybe most obese people don't, some may have felt the pressure and thought that god it's just easier to end life but i don't think most obese people think of ending their life just because they're obese i mean i yeah i think that's my takeaway that i was just like hey i've I've never so why even put that thought in that's probably why they took it down like it it's on the borderline of ethics it's a it's a good one thanks for bringing that in because this actually ties it down to what we were talking in the beginning, like the ethics of, of the product that we'll build and the way we'll showcase it to the world. So, guys, time is up, more than up, I think. But this has been a really productive session. Like last session, I went away feeling like I had just burdened you with so much to do. But this session, because each of you build a prototype and discussed what are the ad strategies, it feels like it feels like we got things done, like actionable things done. So thank you so much for being here. Now you may all respectively go have lunch, dinner, breakfast, a walk in the park, or go watch whatever. Just chill. I will go get my life together. <laughs> Again. Thank you so much for being here. I will text you guys individually about our metals. Have a great weekend and I will see you next Saturday. Cool. Thank you so much. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.